Hey, thanks for joining me today. This is Pastor Lafayette, and we are in Acts chapter 3, near the end of that chapter. Near the end of that chapter, yesterday we uh, talked about a word in verse 21, restoration. Let's uh, pick this up in verse 20, <coughs> and then uh, let's just read where that word is placed. Talking about uh, the presence of the Lord, verse 20, that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. What does that mean? Now, uh, there's been, there have been a lot of ideas about what the restoration of all things would mean. Uh, some thought maybe it would be the restoration of Israel back to uh, being a, a, a nation. Some have thought that was 1948. Some have thought the restoration of, of all things would, would mean the reestablishment of, temple, of a temple and temple worship. Even though the reality is that, that there is no temple. There is no need for a temple anymore. Our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Uh, some have thought that it might be a, a Jewish or Jewish type state or government controlling uh, the world. There have been lots of thoughts. But, but one thought I don't hear very much is the restoration of all things, meaning putting things back the way they were. When Adam walked with God before the fall, the restoration of uh, purity and that relationship and uh, the integrity of that relationship before Adam and Eve fell. The Lord wants to restore. He's not really wanting... He's, he's, he's not, uh, all the things that have happened and all the sin and all the evil, all the wickedness, uh, it's not simply that He wants to destroy something. He wants to restore something. As we're here building the kingdom, we're not just here trying to make political statements or trying to uh, <coughs> make people feel bad or make people feel guilty. Uh, and even when we preach and we preach a convicting message, there is a higher call. There is an ultimate purpose to this. There's an ultimate purpose to letting the name of Jesus be known, to printing Bibles and distributing them. It's the restoration. It's the restoration of relationship between the Creator, God, and mankind so that He could be Father and we could be sons and daughters. I believe that this word somehow implies that. Let's finish out this verse, or this chapter, verse uh, 22. For Moses truly said to the, to the fathers, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. Him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you. And it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. My friend, and that is true. Jesus' words are true, and they are right. And I realize that there are some religions who treat him as a prophet. But he also made the statement that uh, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He is the only way. There is no other way. And if you don't go that way, you will be destroyed. Verse 24. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow, as many as have spoken, have also foretold these days. <coughs> You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, with our fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. The covenant said to Abraham, and he's saying, listen, you guys are sons of the prophets. You're sons of the covenant. You're sons of the father Abraham. And he made a covenant saying that through your seed all families of the earth shall be blessed. 
my friend, it's fulfilled in Jesus. Everyone throughout the entire earth has the ability to come into the blessedness of relationship. Verse 26, To you first, God, having raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to bless you, and turning away every one of you from your iniquities. We have an interesting concept of blessing, I think. Sometimes we think that blessing means you bless me right where I am. Right here, you're just going to give me something. That's what blessing is. That I get something right now, right here, just how I am. Everything's just, just nothing changes. You're just going to give it to me. But the blessing, and apparently the blessing that God speaks about, is the blessing in turning you from darkness unto Jesus. Turning you from wickedness unto righteousness. Turning you from a life of sin to a life of liberty and righteousness. That is true blessing. So blessing here isn't simply, I give you something. Blessing is, I've given you something that you must do something with. My friend, people must repent and they must believe on the name of Jesus or there is no hope for them. If you're a believer, your responsibility is to use his name and to speak of his name and to talk of the hope that is found in him because there is no other name under heaven. Jesus is the way. Father, thank you for this day. And Lord, I pray that you bless, uh, Lord, these who hear, encourage, strengthen, enrich them with your word and your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining me today. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye-bye.